Hey guys, Bella Luna here. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the like button and hit that subscribe button so you can get all of our latest video notifications and check out our episodes from our podcast from The Bitchy Witchies. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about spell oils. This is going to be a relatively short video. Just wanted to give you a few pointers and tips and tricks. So if you've never done a spell oil before, I really recommend that you give it a shot. It's not as hard as you think. Really, it's just like doing a spell, you know, when you put together your ingredients and everything that you want in your spell, but this time you will be putting in an oil to try to design an oil that is catered to your purpose. So, when you are doing spell oils or spell powders for that matter, I like to call it or consider it, it's kind of like a magical alchemy, so to speak, because you're combining things to make a type of special effect. So for instance, if I wanted to do, let's say a type of oil that was going to have a commanding dominating type of effect, then I would gather several different types of ingredients that would either represent being domineering, represent commanding, but also pick some herbs and roots, plants, ingredients and such that have the properties such as calamus root, licorice root, but you can also put in some other things to help enhance that. So if you're making sort of a, a more of a baneful oil where you also perhaps want them to be a little confused to be a little bit more susceptible, to your commanding, then maybe you would throw in poppy seeds as well in that oil. So in other words, you think about what your purpose is, what you're trying to accomplish, and you think of all the different characteristics of what you want this oil to have, and you put in those ingredients. So after you choose your ingredients, and remember, I also mentioned that you pick things that symbolize that as well. So if perhaps if you want to be controlling of that person, perhaps you might find a little mini padlock and put that in there. It can be anything. You don't just have to use herbs. You want to use basically any kind of ingredients that speaks to you and that perhaps represents what you're trying to accomplish. So once you've decided what you want to put in your oil, then you want to think about what carrier oils should I use? So if you're not familiar with that term, a carrier oil is just what it sounds like. It is basically an oil that is going to carry your ingredients. So people usually have two frames of thought for this. You can simply choose an oil that you just like to use all the time just because perhaps it's easy to work with, easy to get a hold of. So really common carrier oil that people use is olive oil or grapeseed oil. Or you can actually take it one step further and look into the various properties of different types of oils. So when you're looking into the different properties of oils, then if you come across an oil that has properties that are reminiscent of or related to your purpose, then you may want to consider using that oil as well. So for instance, if you're making a love oil or a self-love oil or something like that, then perhaps you may want to consider using avocado oil as opposed to just, you know, grapeseed oil or olive oil. So it's not necessary. It's it's just, again, one more thing to consider and one more extra oomph that you can add to that. So I also wanted to leave you with just a few things to consider. So when you are making oils, one of the things that you need to realize and remember is that especially if you are putting in food grade substances, that the oils are not going to last forever. They do have a limited shelf life. 
So if you are going to use as a carrier oil, a type of oil called an unfractionated oil, and these are such oils as olive oil or sweet almond oil. And of course, do your research before you use your carrier oil and figure out if it's unfractionated or not. Examples of oils that are not unfractionated are like coconut oil. So if you're going to use unfractionated oil, then you want to consider adding some vitamin E. Vitamin E will help extend your shelf life. So when you add vitamin E, you'll get approximately a six month shelf life versus without vitamin E, it's gonna last you about three months. Another tip is if you choose to use castor oil, now castor oil is used in several types of baneful oils, or it's something to consider. But if you use castor oil, castor oil can be quite thick very, very thick. So you can consider adding some mineral oil to thin it out. Mineral oil is a pretty light oil. It doesn't really change or do that much except for thin it out. So it just makes it easier to work with. Another thing to consider is, and this kind of goes along with the lines of the vitamin E, is if you can opt for dried versus fresh herbs if you're using herbs. And again, this has to do with the shelf life. If if you're using fresh herbs, fresh fruit, anything like that, it will go rancid a lot quicker. So if you are definitely choosing to use fresh items, then definitely add that vitamin E so that you can extend the life of your oil. But if you can go to a dried version, then that would be easier. Another thing to consider is the safety of your spell oil. This is really important because you want to make sure is your oil consumable or not? Is your oil going to be safe to touch to get on your fingers or are you going to need to use a dropper? Is it extra flammable? For instance, some baneful oils will have some sulfur in it. So on top of the oil, you'll also have sulfur which is flammable so you'll want to be wary of that and be careful if you use it to dress your candles and such. And you want to label your oils accordingly because again, you don't want anybody to accidentally consume it. So the last thing that I want to leave you with to consider is just be creative. Especially with baneful oils, you don't just have to stick with food oil. Think about other types of oils motor oil, fuel oil, lubricant oil, like WD-40. Again, think about the symbolism. This is sympathetic magic. Think about what you are trying to accomplish and use the oil accordingly. So I hope this helped everybody. I hope you got some good pointers with that. If you have any questions on this video, go ahead and put them in the comment below. If you have any other recommendations that you use when you make your spell oils, please go ahead and put them in the comment section below so other people can see that. And also, if you have any ideas or requests for other types of videos, let us know. Again, give us a comment or email us. All of our contact information is down in the description. Have a wonderful, beautiful day, night, what have you, and we will see you on the next video. Don't forget to check out our website at www.bitchywitchies.com. And that's bitchywitchies spelled B-I-T-C-H-Y w-i-t-c-h-y-s dot com. Hey guys, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. Go to Facebook backslash Bitchy Witchy Podcast. And don't forget, the I is number one in Bitchy. And head to Instagram for Instagram backslash official B w podcast to keep up to date on every new episode on our youtube and on anchor check the description all of our links will be available in our description for you to access easily oh.